Well, you know, some terms we've been hearing in the recent uh, debate over health care reform uh, are things like co-ops and opt-outs and trigger mechanisms. And, and you know, it, it's to be frank, it's not entirely clear precisely what these terms mean because they've been thrown around in a rather casual way and it's not clear that the people who are using them really agree on what they think these things are. Now, a co-op is, is, is supposedly a way that uninsured people could band together in pools and buy insurance as a group. So, the, the idea, I think, behind a co-op is someone that doesn't have employer-sponsored health care, you know, might be able to uh, join together with other similarly situated people and through a co-op of some kind or another, uh, get better deals on insurance through insurance providers. Right? And, and on the surface, that sounds plausible. I, I can see where people might think that would be a good idea. The problem with insurance, though, that we want to keep in mind is that insurance suffers from adverse selection. And the people that tended to join co-ops would be the people who tended to need insurance. And so you tend to have a risk pool that was pretty expensive. All right? That doesn't mean that that wouldn't be a good thing for high-risk people to get insurance. But, uh, but the adverse selection issue with these co-ops would likely be, a, be an issue. Um, the trigger mechanism has been presented uh, in the context of the public option. And one of the, um, the uh, suggestions that's been made is that we provide a public option so that you could buy insurance, say, from the government insurance company instead of from the usual list of private, private insurers here. Now, there has been a lot of opposition to the public option for reasons that maybe we'll discuss in a little bit. Uh, and so the trigger mechanism has been provided as a political compromise. The idea being, well, we might not require a public option in our reform now, but what we'll do is have a trigger mechanism in place that would bring the public option uh, to fruition if certain benchmarks were not uh, satisfied with respect to perhaps reductions in the number of uninsured and the like. Now, the opt-out has also been a political response to opposition to the public option. Uh, and, and the suggestion has been, well, maybe we'll let states opt out uh, and, and, not, uh, and not participate in the public option. Now, this is clearly just a, a political ploy uh, to give cover, I think, to, to, po to politicians who, who maybe are concerned about the political fallout of supporting the, um, the health care reform. And, um, you know, it's on one level, if you know, we didn't let states opt out of civil rights legislation or the minimum wage, it seems a bit odd to let them opt out of, you know, the, the, this type of, of major reform. And the, the question is also whether they're going to opt out or not. I heard somebody say uh, that, you know, the states are as likely to opt out of a public option as a kid is to opt out of his allowance. And the idea here is, is if the public option is underpriced, which is what a lot of people fear it will be, then you know, states will view the public option as, as a freebie, as something for nothing. And so, you know, obviously, if somebody else is paying for the health insurance, then why would the state want to preclude its, 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 its citizens from, uh, from having insurance that's paid for by people from another state who are financing the public option? One of the um, particularly contentious uh, issues in the proposed reform has been the fight over a public option. And a public option would be a health insurance company basically run by the government uh, that would provide insurance uh, to people who wanted to go to the government plan rather than to go to private insurers. Now this public option has, has, has generated a lot of debate and, and for good reason because the issue here is the following. Will the public option ever be priced in a way to reflect the cost of providing the health care? Because if it's underpriced, then people will, will, will leave private health care because it'll be more expensive and they'll flock to the public option because it's underpriced. And this is what private health insurers are concerned about. And, and I think one of the issues here that doesn't lend a lot of confidence to how this is going to be priced is if we look at Medicare. Medicare currently has an unfunded liability in excess of 37 trillion dollars, 
What that means is, if you take and you cost out the promises that Medicare has made, and you compare that to the projected revenues that they're going to collect from the Medicare tax, they've got a $37 trillion shortfall. Now, this shortfall didn't just appear yesterday. You know, this is well known that, that Medicare is underpriced, that, uh, that relative to the promises made, they can't pay it to the tune of $37 trillion, yet no effort has been made to correct that. Now, the only thing that has been done is, is, is they've, they've tried to reduce that unfunded liability by paying health care providers less. And it's pretty clear that, uh, that health care providers are underpaid relative to the cost of performing services. And so the overhead of performing health care services just gets sent over to the private insurers who have to pay it through higher premiums. And so the real issue here is whether or not a public option can, that, that, is, that is funded not because of the business decision about what the price that should be charged is, but rather is, is, is priced based upon political expediency, whether that public option can exist on a level playing field with private insurers who have to charge a price that reflects the cost of the services provided. If you want to see an example of how public options work in insurance, I'll send you to the homeowner's insurance market in Florida. In Florida, for homeowner's insurance, we have in place in Florida a public option. It's called citizen's insurance. Now, citizen's insurance was put in place because it was perceived that there were some people in Florida who had difficulty getting private insurance uh, for their homes. So, in particular, those that were located in coastal areas prone to hurricanes and stuff. So, this was originally set up as the insurer of last resort. But, of course, as time went on, it became more and more popular for people to go to the, the citizen's insurance company, the public option, than to buy private insurance because, quite frankly, it was cheaper. Why was it cheaper? Well, they have not reserved enough to cover losses if, the, if two or three hurricanes hit Florida at the same time. The, the, the public option does not have the money uh, they, because they've not collected enough in premiums. So no wonder they're cheaper. Now, it turns out, right now, the public option in Florida is the second largest homeowner's insurer in Florida. They've driven everybody else out. The uh, largest homeowner's insurer in, Flor in Florida is State Farm, which has notified the state insurance commissioner that they plan on exiting the state of Florida by the end of 2011 because by that time they will become insolvent. So, at the end of 2011, the largest homeowners insurer in Florida will be the public option. And the reason is, is that it's, it's, it's been underpriced from the beginning. Uh, they, they have not reserved, put, put enough money aside to pay claims. Uh, so as a consequence, they've underpriced the, the, pu the private insurers that have to, by law, reserve enough. So they've left. And when the big insurance claims come, Citizens is going to have to turn to the state to issue bonds to, to cover uh, the losses, which the state does not have the financial capacity to do. It, it is a completely non-sustainable system. But what's happened is we have a public option that's underpriced that has driven the private option from the field. And that's what the concern is, I think, with the public option for health insurance. And again, you know, the, the fact that Medicare is moving forward with a $37 trillion, soon to be a $40 trillion unfunded liability, it doesn't give one a whole lot of confidence that the political decisions that are made to price the public option in health insurance will price it appropriately.